Hey everyone, it's Lara from ArtRollyHouse.com and today I want to share with you one of my favorite meals that we make very often in my home and it doesn't really have a name because there are several variations to make with this but I'm going to call it a cast iron skillet melt. So I am making this for lunch today and so my kids are up. Usually I try to video during nap time but because it's a meal that we're gonna eat here before they go down for nap, I'm recording. So if you hear noise and screaming or kittens up being in the video with me, that's what's going on. So to get started, we're just gonna put about a tablespoon of coconut oil in a cast iron skillet and I'm going to turn this skillet on medium and get it heating up and then I'm going to put my steaks in. So while that's heating up, I'm going to season my steaks. Now you can make this with any type of meat. You can do this with steaks, ground beef, ground turkey, um, shredded chicken. We've even done this with tuna. You can make it with basically anything you want. Now I am doing deer steak because my husband is a deer hunter and we have lots of deer steak and these are already defrosted in the fridge. So when I decide to make this for lunch, I'm definitely gonna use the meat that I already have. This seasoning salt is my absolute favorite. It's an all-purpose seasoning by McCormick and it's a Himalayan pink salt. It has some black pepper in it, some garlic, a little bit of red pepper, but it's not too spicy. The kids will even eat it and it has a little taste of lemon as well. So whenever I am looking for a seasoning where I don't wanna to have to have out all of my stuff, I'll use this. And so I'm just gonna sprinkle this steak with this seasoning and I like to put a decent amount on here. And then I'm going to throw them into my cast iron skillet and start searing them. Once I put it in, I'm going to season the other side of it. And I'm just going to let these sear, basically cook all the way through on one side and then I'm gonna flip them and let them do the same thing on the other side and then I'm gonna remove them from the pan and cut them into strips. So basically this meal is just a mixture of pretty much any vegetables that you wanna use, some meat, and then it gets topped with cheese. Now while my steaks are cooking, I'm gonna start chopping up some vegetables. So with my steak today, I'm gonna do potatoes. I'm doing about six to eight little red potatoes and then I'm going to do some carrots and some celery and a whole onion is going to go in this. During the summertime I make this dish a lot and we have a lot of fresh squash from our garden and we have tomatoes so I use a lot more of those types of vegetables but this time of year squashes are kind of expensive so I like to kind of stick to potatoes and onions. I make this probably a couple times every single week and I don't think I've ever made it the same way. There are so many variations that you can do with this just by adding in different vegetables, different spices, or different meats, like I said. Okay, now that the meat is basically done, we are going to remove it from the cast iron skillet. And I'm just gonna put it onto a plate here. Now I use about two pounds of meat in this recipe because we have a larger family and I really like to have leftovers because I usually send my husband with leftovers, just whatever we have for meals here at the house, for work the next day, for his lunch. But you can make this really on any size that you want. Now I'm just going to add in a couple more tablespoons of coconut oil into the pan because I'm going to fry my potatoes right in here. 
And that's the beauty of this recipe is that you only have to use one pan. We're gonna make everything here in the cast iron skillet. So I'm gonna add in my potatoes and carrots first because those are the vegetables that take the longest to cook. And then once those are starting to get soft, then I will add in the celery and the onion. I'm going to sprinkle the veggies with my seasoning salt as well. And my trick with cooking with a cast iron skillet is you definitely want your cast iron skillet to be hot before you put your food on it, which obviously it was because we just made our steak on there. And then the less that you flip and stir, the better off it is. So I'm just gonna let this sit here and cook. And then after about five minutes or so, I'm going to flip it all over. While the vegetables are cooking, I'm gonna cut my steak into strips. Now, because I have little kids, I kind of do more chunks than strips to make it easier for them to eat. And this steak is not completely done yet. It's just seared on both sides, but it's going to cook further when we add it back in. So I try to make it to be almost up, but not completely done. So then by the end, it's not dried out. Now that the potatoes and carrots are getting soft and I flipped them over, I'm gonna go ahead and add in the onions and the celery. I am going to cover this with a lid just to help the vegetables soften up a little bit quicker. While the vegetables are cooking, I am going to shred some cheese to put on top of this. I like to use a block of cheese because I've noticed that cheeses at the store that come in like shredded bags of cheese already, they have a lot of added ingredients in there that help it to not clump and to add flavor and sometimes those seasonings are not the best for you so I find it that it's better off to just buy a block of cheese and shred it yourself. I also try to find organic cheese. There are a few stores around here that actually sell raw cheese and if I can get that I go for that. I am a sharp cheese kind of gal so I am using some sharp cheddar cheese here but you can use any type of cheese that you prefer. It doesn't really matter and we have been dairy free in here before whenever we obviously did Whole 30. And also I had a child that was had a dairy sensitivity, but he doesn't anymore. So I have made this without cheese and it's still really delicious, but that's why I give it the name um, melt because the cheese melts on top and it is really good with the cheese, but you don't necessarily have to have cheese on this if you are dairy free. And like I said, when we did the Whole 30 last month, I made several of these types of meals and just eliminated the cheese. Now I'm going to add my steak back in to my vegetables here. And I'm gonna stir all of this up. Now I'm just going to top this with my cheese. Just sprinkle it over the whole thing. And you can get the full recipe for this on the blog with some exact measurements. I am kind of a person that likes to just kind of judge things and do it as I go, but I do have a full recipe written out for you guys over on the blog in a printable form if you guys want that. And then I am going to top it with some green onions because I think that is delicious. And then I'm going to put this in a 400 degrees preheated oven for about five minutes. If you want some more variations on this recipe using different meats and vegetables, head over to the blog because I have out a few different recipes written out over there. And I really hope that you enjoyed this video. You can get access to my online resource library with a few other of my resources. There's a link for that in the description below. And if this is your first time on my channel, please hit that subscribe button. I get out new videos every single week on essential oil education, DIY recipes, and natural remedies for your home, health, and body. Thank you so much for stopping by our oily house.